you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try the question before moving on. Our first step is to draw a free body diagram showing the forces acting on M1 and then a separate free body diagram for M2. Now there are four forces acting on mass one. We have the gravitational force acting downward. We have the surface pushing upward on mass one. We also have the applied force F indicated to the right side. That was the force that was drawn in the diagram originally. And then what we must realize from one of Newton's laws is the following. If mass one is pushing up against mass two, which is, it clearly is from the diagram, then mass two in response to that must push back on mass one. It's an action-reaction force. And that force has been labeled right here. We've labeled it the force that object two or mass two is pushing back on mass one. Now over on mass two, we only have three forces. We have the gravitational force, we have the normal force as described earlier, and then we have the force that mass one is exerting on mass two. It should be pretty obvious that if mass one is being push to the right, then it's going to be pushing up against mass two. We actually already spoke of that force. We said that mass one was pushing up against mass two, and in response, mass two pushes back on mass one. Those are equal and oppositely directed forces. So what we've done is we've labeled that force F1 acting on two. In fact, since those two forces are equal in magnitude, it might be helpful to give them a label with just a single letter. So instead of calling it F2 on one in this diagram and then F1 on two in the other diagram, let's just give it a general label since they are the same. To keep it simple, we'll just use the label F for those forces. Now after drawing and explaining these free body diagrams, we're going to use Newton's second law. And more specifically, since these objects will be accelerating in the x direction, we can attach x subscripts to the force and acceleration. We can go ahead and first apply this law to mass two. There's only one force acting in the x direction for mass two, and that is the force that we've labeled F. So let's plug that into the sum of the forces in the x direction. Notice we've also plugged in 1.2 for the mass because M2 was stated in the question as being 1.2 kilograms. Now, of course, this equation has two unknowns, the force F and the acceleration. So what we'll do is we'll circle it and we'll hang on to it and we'll use it when we apply Newton's second law to the first mass. So let's do that next. Now the first mass has two forces acting in the x direction. There is the applied force F, which was given to us as being 3.2 Newtons, and then there's the force that we discussed earlier that we don't yet know. So notice that force is pointing to the left in this free body diagram, so it's going to be negative when we plug it into the net force equation. So let's put those two x-directed forces into the equation. Notice that we've plugged 2.3 in for the mass of object one because that was stated in the question. Notice also that we can replace this F force right here with 1.2 times the acceleration, which we found earlier when we applied Newton's second law to the second object. So let's make that substitution. Now it's rather easy to solve for AX, so go ahead and take the time to do that. You should get 0.914 meters per second squared, and then all we need to do is take that acceleration and plug it back into the equation right here to solve for the force that's acting between the two objects. It was that action-reaction force. So let's substitute in 0.914 in for this equation, for the acceleration, and that'll give us the force. And when you do that, you should get 1.1 newtons for the force that's acting between mass one and mass two. So part A is solved. Now in part B, we are told that a force of the same magnitude is applied to the smaller block, but in the opposite direction. So what that means is that instead of this force acting to the right on mass one, it's now going to be acting to the left on mass two. So let's adjust the picture accordingly. Now, of course, that's also going to change our free body diagram. Instead of an applied force acting on mass one to the right, we're gonna have the applied force acting on mass two to the left. So let's make that change. Now, interestingly, the force that we've labeled with an F in red is going to remain in the same position. This is that action-reaction force, and let's just try to explain that one more time to make sure it makes sense. So mass two is pushing up against mass one. And so in response to that, mass one will push back on mass two. So there will be this rightward directed force acting on mass two, and that's what we have indicated here. On mass one, it's to the left because mass two is pushing on mass one to the left. So mass one feels that very same force, but it's directed to the left. So hopefully that makes sense. We don't have to change the 
labels of this red force on either free body diagram. We can now apply Newton's second law. This time we'll apply it first to mass one. There's only one force acting on mass one, and that is the negatively directed unknown force F. Also what we want to note is that since the net force is pointing to the left on object one, there's only one force acting in the X direction, and that's to the left, that means the acceleration is also going to be negative. It's going to be accelerating in the leftward or negative direction. Since there's a negative sign on both sides of this equation, we can cancel them out. As before, there are two unknowns here, so we can't solve yet. Let's turn to Newton's second law for object two. Now there are two forces in the X direction. We have the negatively directed applied force, and then we have the unknown force that's pointing to the right, so that'll be positive. Notice that M2 will also accelerate to the left. We know that because we have an overall applied force pushing to the left on mass 2. There's no friction, so mass 2 necessarily has to accelerate to the left, so we need to include a negative sign here. We're going to go ahead and make a substitution. We know that the unknown force F here is 2.3 AX. We can substitute that in right there. When we solve for AX, we get the same value that we obtained previously, which probably makes sense. So we have 0.914 meters per second squared, and then we can sub that back into here to get the unknown force. And when we do that, we find that that unknown force is indeed equal to the 2.1 newtons that part B predicted and sort of told us that it would turn out to be. Now to explain the discrepancy or the difference between that force in part A and part B, we want to take note here that the acceleration was the same in either case. Whether you push on the blocks from the right side or from the left side, you should obtain the same acceleration because you're still pushing with the same amount of force and the same amount of overall mass. Now in part A, the reaction force in order to accelerate block 2 only had to accelerate a mass of 1.2 kilograms. So it didn't require as much force to accelerate a 1.2 kilogram mass as it would in part B, where the reaction force had to accelerate the larger mass of 2.3 kilograms. So in short, in order to maintain the overall same acceleration in both problems, the reaction force had to be larger in part B because it needed to accelerate a mass of 2.3 kilograms as opposed to in part A, where that reaction force only needed to accelerate a mass of 1.2 kilograms.